Going viral on YouTube, is it still possible? With millions of hours of video being uploaded every single day, you might be thinking that ship has sailed. But I'm so excited for today's featured interview from our Think Marketing podcast, where I'm sharing with you a brand new creator who went from zero to over three million views in under eight months and from being a complete unknown to a leader in her industry on YouTube. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Heather Torres here from Think Media, where we help you build your influence with online video. And on this channel, we do tech gear reviews, YouTube tips and strategies, and we bring you interviews with creators just like you. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Did you know we have a podcast? Yes, the Think Media team started a podcast called the Think Marketing Podcast. And one of the episodes from season one was a featured interview with my friend, Erica Kohlberg. Erica Kohlberg is an attorney and personal finance finance expert featured in CNBC, US News and World Report, Business Insider, and The Washington Post and more. She's also the founder of Plug and Law, which provides legal agreements for online businesses and entrepreneurs. She was fed up with working around the clock. And so she started her YouTube channel. She quit her corporate job where she was making over $250,000 a year. And she went viral on YouTube. She was a brand new content creator, probably just like you. And so I wanted to bring her here on Think Media to give you this one strategy that she used to go viral. So let's get into the featured interview. Well, Erica, thank you so much for joining me on the Think Marketing Podcast. How are you doing? <laughs> Thank you for having me, Heather. I'm great. This is so fun to be on this podcast. I, I think your story to me is just so inspiring and I can't wait to kind of dig into the details of it and really dive into how you've grown your channel to over 3 million views in under a year's time. And you had one specific strategy that we really came down to that really helped blow up your channel. And I wanna get into that. But first, for everyone who's just listening, can you give us a little bit, bit of a background as to how you even got started on YouTube? But even just a little bit before that, what even was your journey to YouTube? Sure. That's a great question. So I'm a lawyer by background and basically I practiced corporate law at this big law firm and towards the end of my time there, I was really starting to get fed up with the culture, but also I wanted to do something different with my life and I had this idea for an online legal company that I wanted to start. And so I was really excited about that, but I also wanted to do something that was completely unrelated to law and just something out of my comfort zone and something where I could feel like I was helping people. Because as a corporate lawyer, you're only helping these big corporations. You're helping big corporations get richer. So I wanted to do something that was non-legal and also really would help people and put myself out of my comfort zone. So for me, the natural thing was to talk about personal finance. And the reason I love personal finance is learning about personal finance and all of these tips and tricks led me to paying off $225,000 of student loans within two years. And that's what allowed me to quit my job to start my own company. So I'm really grateful to the people who taught me about it. So I kind of wanted to spread that knowledge. And I thought between a blog and a YouTube channel, a blog is just very natural to me. I love writing. I love being behind a computer. That's what I'm used to. But YouTube was some a completely foreign thing that I could never, a year ago, if you told me I would be on YouTube, I wouldn't have believed you. I, it's just so foreign to me. But I was like, I need to try to put myself out of my comfort zone and do that. So that's how the YouTube channel started. And my goal really wasn't to become big on YouTube. My goal was to just try to help even like five viewers and stay consistent. So from the beginning, I said, I'm going to do it for one year, one video every single week, 52 videos, and then see how I like it, see what happens from there. Wow, there's so much I wanna unpack there. I love that you started out of passion um, for the project. I love that you paid off your debt so that you could start this. I think there's so many pieces um, that I wanna help creators with and, and those two are, are such big ones. But I wanna go back to, you said a year ago, you would not have been the person to do a YouTube channel. So uh, let's go back to those first five, 10 videos that you created. One, how did it finally feel to start putting this information out 
into the world? It's hard. I, I think I had a lot of internal fears, but then from the external side, I also had other lawyers telling me like, you can't be on YouTube. You're going to ruin your professional image. And I had other lawyers telling me it was such a bad idea, but I think I'm kind of rebellious. So that almost motivated me more <laughs> to like, to, to do it. And so it was, it was tough. Like the first video, I was so uncomfortable. I was sweating. I forgot to plug in my mic, like all the beginner mistakes that you make, even though I had prepared, like I had watched think media videos. I had watched all of these videos to like learn about the game of YouTube and I was still utterly unprepared. And <laughs> but you just have to start. That's what I've learned is you really have to start. You can't be a perfectionist about YouTube because the only way you're going to learn and grow is by actually doing it, not by watching videos about how to do it, so. This video was sponsored by StreamYard. This is our go-to platform for live streaming to YouTube and Facebook, especially when we have multiple people joining us on a stream. With an incredibly easy to use interface for doing cool transitions, bringing in text on the screen, and seamlessly bringing on guests. This is the perfect platform for the new and experienced creators alike. You can use the link that we have in the description below to get $10 off. I had the same fears trying to get on video. I'm like three, if, 10 years ago, if you would have told me this would be my career, that's no way that would have happened. Now you just touched on it a little bit and I wanna maybe just have you speak into the listener right now who has a professional career that may not be technically suited for YouTube in other people's eyes. Um, walk me through how you overcame that because we do have a lot of business owners who have traditional businesses like real estate agents and plumbers and electricians and, you know, um, uh, copywriters and people who don't technically do YouTube, right? Because you're not a YouTuber, you're a business owner using YouTube to grow a business. So walk me through what that felt like and how you overcame the idea of actually having to uh, step out of that, right? That professional, non-traditional YouTube role and come into this space. So the thing about leaving your comfort zone is the first step out of your comfort zone is the hardest. It just, it feels so tremendous, like a leap almost, but then every step afterwards gets much easier. So for me, like the act of recording and posting the first video was absolutely the hardest, but then every video after that, like it's already out there in the public, people who are gonna judge already judged, it's fine, like it's out there. And then I think also now that I'm, a business owner, an online business owner, on top of being on YouTube, on top of being a lawyer, I really see the potential for any business owner to be on YouTube because it's not about subscribers, it's about views. And when you're a business owner on YouTube, you're attracting highly qualified leads because they're searching for a specific thing that they're looking for. For me, I'm selling on my legal company website, one of the things we sell is privacy policy. So I'm about to launch a separate business YouTube channel where all I talk about is the legal stuff. So if someone's searching for a privacy policy, hopefully that idea is my my privacy policy video is going to come up top and that's going to be a very qualified lead for business. So I think you have to get over the fear as a business owner of putting yourself out on camera, realize you're not going to be great at the beginning, but realize how instrumental it is for your business. There, This is only going in one direction. And the thing about putting yourself on camera versus a business having a traditional blog is there's the no like and trust factor. When people see you in person, they automatically are going to connect with you far more than they ever will through a a piece that you've written. Oh man. Oh, I just, I'm over here just shaking my head. If you're not watching the video and you're just listening to the podcast right now, I'm over here just giddy by the things that you're saying, Erica, because that is so real. It's the no like and trust factor and the qualified lead that you technically get for free, right? Like you put this video out there. I mean, yeah, it's work and you may have to, you know, um, you may have a team around you or whatever that looks like, but literally this is like free advertisement to the exact thing that your target audience wants. I cannot wait to geek out. Um, but looking at your channel, Erica, you've been on YouTube now for less than a year. You just said, you know, it, it really isn't about the subscribers, which I completely agree with. And the views is what really matters. You're over already three million views. Can we just clap it up and just be so excited for that? How awesome is that? Walk me through, how did you do it? How did you get to 3 million views? There was a main strategy that you had after you got a couple videos out that you were like, aha, this is the thing. Walk me through that journey. Sure. So 
I think, so on YouTube, just as background, there's evergreen content and then there's trendy content, really. And for my channel, I was doing personal finance, I only wanted to do evergreen content. I wanted to do things that, you know, how to save money, that it wouldn't matter if you watch it now or a year from now. So I was very hesitant to jump onto trends. And then the first stimulus check was announced and I started to see that tons of people were searching for stimulus content related to the next stimulus check. And then another thing I noticed was, so as a small YouTuber, one of the biggest, best techniques I have for growing when you're at zero subscribers is to comment on other channels within your niche. So because of that, I was following probably 80 to 90 personal finance channels within my niche. So it's very, very easy for me to pick up on trends because I'm following 90 channels. So I started to see that other channels were doing it. And then I thought that maybe from a legal perspective, I could actually read the bill and provide really valuable information that maybe not everyone can provide because not everyone has the time to read a 100 page bill to tell you what a stimulus check is and what the rules are behind it. So I decided to jump on to that trendy topic. And sure enough, I created, I think I was, I did, had done 25 videos. So I had done 25 weeks of YouTube, one video per week. And then I released two stimulus videos that day, that Tuesday. And prior to that, probably the highest amount of views I'd gotten was around 100 on the first day. That was like 100 would be a big deal for me. And that day that I released the stimulus check, it was unbelievable. Like I thought my metrics were broken. I was seeing it just go up and up. And I think in the first day it was like 20,000 views, which was crazy. It was my very first video I put out on a trendy topic on stimulus checks and it just blew up. So after that, I realized there's probably a need here. People enjoyed that content. So let me just go ahead and do that. So I broke my rule of only doing one video a week. And so I released two or three that week. And then I, I've just kept going <laughs> since then. Wow, I, I love how you spotted the trend and you, we, we say here at uh, Think Marketing and at Think Media, different is better than better. And you thought, what's the spin I could put on it, right? Like you said, you were following all these other um, financial YouTube channels and they were talking about it, but you're like, what is the thing I can do that made it different? And because you are a lawyer, because you have that background, you understand that, you were able to bring a different perspective. And I think one thing you can learn here at Think Marketing is exactly what Erica just said. You know, she was doing two really critical things. She was involved in the niche that she wants to grow in. And two, she spotted the trend and decided that she was gonna break the rules and actually make the content that the viewer wanted, right? When we take ourselves out of our own self and we think about what does the viewer need right now, Erica, walk me through how that has grown your channel, how that has grown your business. What does that look like? Because you doubled down, you didn't just make one video a week, like you said, you doubled down and started making a ton of videos on this. I think I counted like 40 videos since that first one. I'm thinking, how do you even have the time for that? But walk me through, what has this done for your credibility? What has this done for your business? Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, it's really, I mean, it's a game changer going from, I think I went from 2,000 subscribers to 50,000 within 30 days. And at that point when I had my first viral or semi, viral for my standards, viral uh, stimulus video, I was not even monetized. I had 2,000 hours of watch time at that point. And if you know, like you need 4,000 hours to be monetized. So I wasn't even close. My, I, I treat this kind of like a business. So my, I was estimating that I would Mon get monetized by June. So because of that first one, I ended up getting monetized end of April. Obviously from a financial perspective, I think within those 30 days after getting monetized, I made $20,000, which is unheard of. I was making zero before that. And it's also been great for my online business plug in law too, because it's brought a lot more attention to it. And more people know that I'm a lawyer because every stimulus video starts with lawyer explains. So I make it very obvious. And I think it's just, it's been an absolute game changer. Obviously having Think Media reach out to me, I had Business Insider do an article on me. The opportunities are endless and it's 
really not like I did anything special that can't be replicated. Anyone can do this. Anyone can pick up on trends and just try to put your own spin to it and make this happen. Because the thing with YouTube is you can't really control if you get a viral video or not. That's mostly up to the YouTube algorithm. But the factors that you can control are things like how much value are you really providing? Um, are you picking up on trendy things? And those are the factors you can control. So if you really focus on that, then eventually I'm convinced that everyone is going to get that shot from the YouTube algorithm. I could not agree more. We always say it's about the base hits that will turn into the home runs, right? Like it, it really is, you just have to keep putting the content out there. And one thing I love about the content you're putting out is um, you say at the beginning, you know, this channel is, is a financial channel, I'm a lawyer, and I'm talking about this today. Like you're not putting yourself in a box where this channel will only be about a stimulus check, right? You're just saying, this is the trend in the industry that I'm in and I'm also talking about it. And I love that you still give yourself yourself that gap that you could also talk about apps or you can talk about financial, um, you know, uh, financial uh, ways that people can handle their money, all these different things still. But right now you're just choosing to ride the trend. I think that's so critical. Erica, walk me through as a business owner. What does your team look like? Are you doing all of this on your own? Have you outsourced it? Because I know a lot of business owners come into YouTube trying to be the only person on the team. What does your team look like as you have exploded your channel? Yeah, that's great. So my big biggest tip for a business owner. The biggest excuse that business owners have not to start YouTube is time. They're like, oh, I can't find time. Well, the thing is, if you outsource every component that you can actually outsource, YouTube shouldn't take you that long and the rewards can just be exponential. So it's certainly worth the time that you put into it. So actually I'm probably unique from the very beginning. I saw YouTube as an investment, not necessarily for this personal finance channel, but because I knew I was going to create this second legal channel. So I saw it as an investment for uh, my business. And so I outsourced everything from video one really. Uh, so video editing, I have a great editor that does all of my editing. Uh, thumbnails, I have someone that does thumbnails because as a business owner, if I did learn how to edit. So I watched YouTube videos and learned how to do Adobe Premiere Pro. But first of all, I spent like 40 hours doing that, staying up late at night. And then I realized when I first started editing, editing my videos, the video was taking me actually like eight hours to edit. And that's just not efficient when you're trying to run a business. So I outsourced that from the beginning and highly recommend doing that because it'll just take a load off your plate. And the more you make the process of YouTube simple and stop trying to control every single aspect of it, the more likely you are to continue with it because you're going to have more time freed up due to outsourcing. Yeah, and I know you spend a lot of time actually preparing for your videos, right? So rather than you being the person that is learning the editing and making the thumbnails and tweaking all the things, you're spending a good portion of your time actually just preparing to make valuable content. Can you walk me through why that is so important and why you think that's really made you grow on YouTube? Sure. So I remember when I was just about to start YouTube and was watching all of these videos on Think Media and these other outlets, one of the things that you hear a lot of creators say is the number one most important thing is to provide valuable content and really make it that your audience like loves every piece of the information you're providing and it finds it very unique and valuable. And when you're first starting out, you don't really understand what that means. I was like, that's so fluffy. Like I need concrete advice. Like, how do I do it? That's not helpful. But unfortunately, like now that I'm on the other side and have this channel, that's the best advice I can give is put the most time into preparing, researching, scripting, or at least bullet pointing. Second most time should go into uh, filming and that shouldn't take that long. And then least is least priority is the editing really, because I don't think editing is really the game changer. I think what's the game changer is how valuable the content is. And that comes from the phase where you're re researching and preparing. So for me, again, because I knew my differentiating factor for the stimulus checks was that I could actually read the bills and digest them and then put them into video format and summarize 100 pages into a two minute video. That's where the bulk of my time goes. So for a 100 page bill, I mean, it takes me like 10, 15 hours to read and prepare just to create a five minute video. And people don't see all of the work that goes into the back end, but I think they appreciate it. And I think that's why I was able to be successful, I guess, in this 
in this space. Yeah, and you're just getting started. Isn't that amazing to think? Like you're just getting started. You figured out what works for you and how you can make that grow. And uh, I I love that you're also, you have a heart for creators. You have a heart for this industry in people understanding um, the legal side or even just understanding what they need to do to protect themselves. Tell me just a little bit about the business that you're in and the next YouTube channel that you're gonna be starting. Sure, so the business is called Plug and Law. And basically, the reason I wanted to start it is because, again, I was this corporate lawyer, highest paid corporate lawyer, one of the biggest law firms, and I really felt like I was only helping these corporations. It wasn't satisfying. It, the money only matters to a certain point, right? Eventually, you have to do something in your life that has an impact. And I saw this huge gap in the legal industry where online creators, for instance, if they want legal help, they have two choices. Really the first is to get stuff for free online. So let's say they need a privacy policy for their website. They can find one for free online. Unfortunately, they're not very great. They don't really protect you. Or they can hire a lawyer, which is too expensive for everyone starting out basically. And there was this huge middle gap. So I wanted to create a business where I could use templates. So for example, the privacy policy has a template where I walk you through the sections that you need to fill out and walk you through why it's important and use video to do that. So you're actually being handheld by an attorney, but it doesn't, but you're not paying attorney prices. It's probably less than 10% of what you'd actually pay for an attorney. So I saw that gap and I wanted to use video as the medium to make legal more accessible because I think also a lot of lawyers operate based on fear. They like to scare you and say like, you're gonna get sued as a small business owner if you don't have these documents in place. I don't like that. I think it's important, yes, but I'm never going to scare you into a sale. My goal is to really be like this anti-lawyer. Like I don't I don't want these lawyers taking three thousand dollars from you at the beginning of your business where when it's so critical to invest that money elsewhere. So I really want to make this product where you're getting top quality legal documents for your business, but you're not paying an arm and a leg for it. So that's how Plug in Law started and that's my mission with that is really to help others who are just like me. Like now I'm an online creator, I'm an online business owner. So I really understand the needs of online creators and online business owners too. So that's really my goal with Plug in Law. Wow, I, I've i already signed up. I'm like, I'm in, you've sold me. I'm like totally there. I cannot wait for all of the creators listening on the Think Marketing Podcast uh, to get connected with you because I think it's really important that we understand as we move into this space of online business, how can we we can be protected and the laws that are around it. So I just, I'm so grateful that you've stepped into that zone to help creators like us be able to do that. Erica, where can people connect with you if they wanna go deeper and they wanna follow along on your journey? Yeah, the best place uh, is for my personal brand, ericacoberg.com. And then for my legal website, it's plugandlaw.com. Awesome. So we'll make sure that that is linked in the YouTube description below, as well as if you're listening right now on iTunes or Spotify, it'll be in the description. So you can click on that, head over and connect with Erica. Well, Erica, thank you so much for being on today. I love to always ask the guest uh, the last question, which is if you could give yourself advice when you first got started, knowing what you know now, what would you tell to yourself? That's really good. Probably just don't let fear stop you. Don't let yourself stop you from achieving what you could possibly achieve on YouTube because there are too many people out there who have dreamt of starting a channel but never actually start because they let all these things like, oh, what are people gonna say? Like, am I gonna be horrible? Are people gonna write mean comments? They let those things really impact them and prevent them from starting. So my biggest thing is just to start. The hardest part of YouTube is starting and the second hardest part is consistency and both of those are in your control, so. Well, I hope that one strategy helped you out. You know, really tapping into trends, being consistent on YouTube and giving your audience exactly what they're asking for is really the recipe for success on YouTube. And if you want to listen to some other interviews from our Think Marketing podcast, you can subscribe anywhere that you listen to podcasts as well as on YouTube. My question for you today is, have you done a video around a trend? Let me know in the comment section below, what was your video about? I would love to go and watch it. 
And if you're ready to dive into some more content about how to get started on YouTube, right? We have a four part series over on our Think Marketing podcast channel where you can listen to how to get started on YouTube, what videos you should be making, how to tap into what your audience is searching for and how to make money with a small channel. So you can click or tap the screen right now to go over and watch that series, or you can click or tap the screen to watch another video from Think Media. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.